plants also have organs. Leaves are where photosynthesis takes place, producing food for the plant. Water also leaves the plant through them, allowing transpiration to take place, the diffusing of water into roots and up the xylem. Roots are where water and mineral ions enter the plant. The meristem is where new cells are made, like we saw earlier. Xylem are the long continuous tubes which water rises up. We say it's unidirectional, only goes in one direction. That's transpiration, like we said, while phloem are the conveyor belts of cells that transport sugars, food and sap up and down the plant. We call this translocation. That's bidirectional. The rate of transpiration can be increased by the following. Increasing the temperature, decreasing the humidity and increasing the air movement. All of these result in water evaporating from the leaves at a faster rate. Just for triple real quick, the lack of nitrate ions means the plant can't synthesize proteins effectively, and that stunts growth. Chlorosis is the scientific term for the yellowing of leaves. This can be due to magnesium deficiency, as it's needed to make chlorophyll. The cross-section of a leaf looks like this. Every layer has its own specific function. At the top, we have the waterproof waxy cuticle. Not to stop water from entering the leaf, but to stop it from evaporating from the top and causing the leaf to dry out. The upper epidermis, epidermis just means outer layer, consists of transparent cells that allow light to pass through to the palisade mesophyll layer. Mesophyll just means a layer in the middle. These are chock full of chloroplasts, so this is where the majority of photosynthesis takes place. Under that is the spongy mesophyll layer that has lots of gaps around the cells to increase the surface area through which gas exchange can occur. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the cells while oxygen and water diffuse out. We also have the vascular bundle that includes the xylem and phloem. The lower epidermis is the bottommost layer of the leaf, and it has holes in it called stomata, which is how gases enter and exit the leaf. The size of a stoma is controlled by the guard cells that flank the hole. They change size to control the rate at which gases enter and leave. For example, they close the stomata at night to reduce the rate of water loss, as less water is needed for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis happens in chlorophyll and chloroplasts in plant cells to provide food for the plant. Here's the word and balanced chemical equation for it. And as energy is needed in the form of light to make this reaction happen, this is an endothermic reaction. The glucose made from photosynthesis is used for respiration or is turned into starch or fat as a store of energy. Cellulose is used to produce cell walls and amino acids are used for synthesizing proteins. The rate of photosynthesis is increased with higher temperature, unless it's so high that enzyme denaturing occurs, increasing light intensity or increasing CO2 concentration. Any one of these can be a limiting factor, by the way. For example, even if there's lots of CO2 and it's warm, if there's not enough light, the rate will be limited by this. In other words, it doesn't matter how much you increase the other two, it won't get any faster. A graph might look like this. Before the graph plateaus, levels out, the variable on the x-axis has to be the limiting factor. After, it isn't. It must be one of the other two instead. If you have two lines, for example, different temperatures, then temperature must be a limiting factor. Here's the practical on this. We can measure the rate of photosynthesis by submerging pond weed in an inverted measuring cylinder. We measure the volume of oxygen made over time. We can instead count the bubbles, but it's less accurate. The independent variable could be the light intensity, and that's changed by varying the distance from the light source, for example, a lamp. However, light intensity follows an inverse square relationship. In other words, if you double the distance, the light intensity quarters. Three times further, one-ninth of the intensity. Plants also have their own hormones, which we can utilize when growing plants. Gibberellins cause seed germination to occur, which we can add to seeds to give them a wake-up call. It also promotes flowering and increases the size of fruits. Ethene induces ripening of fruits, so we can add them to bananas, for example, when they're in transit. Auxins control shoot and root growth. It's destroyed by sunlight, so it gathers on the shaded side of a shoot, causing more growth and elongation of cells on the shaded side, so the shoot bends toward the sun or light source. This is what we call phototropism. In roots, however, auxins inhibit growth. The hormone gathers on the bottom of a root, and so that means the top side grows more quickly, causing the root to grow downwards. This is called geotropism. We can also use auxins as weed killers, rooting powders, and for promoting growth in tissue cultures. We can do a mini investigation. We can put some seeds on damp cotton wool in a petri dish. For example, stand the petri dish on its side, leave for a few days, then turn 90 degrees, and you should see that the roots have bent in that time, proving that geotropism is true for roots. Leave a thumbs up if you found this helpful. I've also made videos covering whole papers to help you in your revision. Click on the card to go to the playlist for your board, or have a look on my channel for more. See you next time.